Hi, Mary, are you here? Hi, Nona. Great to hear your voice. Great to see you. I've I'm your enjoyed, lady. I've enjoyed your emails um, oh, you. to the town very, very much. It's it's really nice to hear such a cordial and, and um, positive. Um, Thank you. Constructive. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I think you have your work cut out for you. That's right. Hey, Yogi. Hello, Nona. Hi, Yogi. Hey. Hey, Mary. Hey, Catherine. Hi. Good to see you. I like this. This is my favorite committee. Uh. <laughs> my favorite committee, too. <laughs> Except for the Jasper Ridge Dosing Committee, but it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went out with the MA uh, AP students today. It was mm. glorious. It was oh. uh, spectacular. It was super fun. Those kids are so great. <laughs> How great. Good for you. Hi, Judith. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I, I can do a Zoom meeting. Yeah, right. <laughs> are you sick? Are. You sound hoarse. I tested positive for COVID today. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right. So now I'm fighting, fighting the bureaucracy to get myself some Paxlovid. It's harder than you'd think. <laughs> really? Yeah. There's no justice. <laughs> Actually, a pharmacist can prescribe it if you have recent um, test results for like kidney function. <laughs> right, but right. Who has that, right? <laughs> I actually, I actually oh, yeah. do. I do have that, and I went through that whole thing, and it said that I don't qualify for having it. First of all, they don't don't do it for Medicare, so I took the Medicare off, and I said I'll just pay for it. And then when I went through it all, because I'm on some blood pressure medicine, um, and anyway. And then they have to get your labs, right? So then they have to yeah. write to the okay. clinic and the clinic doesn't do anything in the evening. You'd think they'd have somebody there in the evening to do this. No. no. And they won't no. just call it. They have, to have, they have to have a video visit with you, you know? She said, well, if you're really in a hurry, you can come to urgent care. And I said, are you crazy? I've got COVID. You don't want me in your urgent care. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's hilarious. That, that is amazing. That's actually what happened to me too. And finally, I just got a video conference with a physician who prescribed and it, you know, it was, just, but it was crazy. Like, I'm, you really think I'm going to go in? <laughs> right, right. And, it, and it, so I do, I have a video visit tomorrow morning. Oh, good. But I've been sick for a couple of days. So, you know, you'd like to get the damn stuff and start it because it doesn't work if you wait too long. <laughs> Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Good. I'm now worried about my Durka over here in Woodside. What's the problem? Uh, it's not, not like it used to be, so to speak. You know, uh, is it uh, being overgrown by a lot of plants? It doesn't like, uh, it likes dappled shade, but not full shade. And uh, oak trees, coastalized, will make it die out. It seems to be dying out, and it may be the trees. You're right. It may yeah. be the trees. The, the one the, place. Uh, we... The uh, Durka in Jasper Ridge is in full bloom right now. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I went by today. It was Rock beautiful. Dead beautiful. Well, the ones at Edgewood are blooming too, though they've got a big stripe right through the middle of them where the bulldozer went. So, <laughs> <laughs> God, do we really have to take that too, as well as yeah. everything else? Well, you know, it's just fire stuff. So, you know, just go right through. <laughs> right, have at it. Have at it. Have it's at so it, you know. it. I mean, it really does not tolerate being messed with. Oh, it tolerates it pretty well if you don't tear up the roots. In fact, actually, a couple were knocked over by the bulldozer and somehow managed to pop up, and they're blooming. <laughs> oh, oh cool. cool. Well, Have everybody ever should come see our, our, our patch. Yeah. Have you ever seen a, a cotyledonous one, a seedling? 
Yeah, yeah. Sure. I got a picture of one at Jasper Ridge on um, Trail 8 a couple years ago. Hmm. Don't see them often. <laughs> Well, we, I'll, I'll go look. Yeah, especially bay trees. If you've got a lot of bay trees, that sort of thing, just thin it out a little bit. <laughs> We're losing them at Edgewood along the Sylvan Trail, which is unfortunately the only place they're on trail. And oh. it's, it's all due to shade. Huh. They need a fire. <laughs> I'll have to look at that. Have, they need fire. Yeah. Oh, dear. A disturbance. How do they do with the fire? I don't. We don't. Do we know this? Um, well, actually, they probably come back. We, I'm going to find out because a number of them got completely torched at Edgewood. Oh. And so I will find. Yeah, the fire got into them, burned several bushes completely, and so I'm going to find out if they come back. It's amazing. The Malacothamnus all came back from the roots. A number of the uh, chaparral currants did. Uh, there are a couple that didn't yet. I'm still mm -hmm. watching them. So, and the Malacathamna seedlings are unbelievable. Oh, Those had fun. been started a couple uh, in 2012. Um, PG&E cut the chaparral on this ridge, put it in piles and burned it, and then scattered the charcoal all over. Oh. Malacathamna came up from that. Well, they had already reached blooming uh, size, so they were good-sized bushes, full bloom, beautiful things. Scorched them all. The seeds they sit down are all coming up. It is just amazing. <laughs> well, that's fun. We're going to be looking for other things that are fire followers that are in there, because a fire like that hasn't occurred since 1943. Wow. Oh, Dieter, okay. is that Chaparral Mallow. I got it. Chaparral Mallow, for those of you who don't speak Latin. <laughs> it's, it is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. It when pretty. it's flowering, it's what just a pretty flower. Solid the one flowers. we have in Jasper Ridge is yellow. This is one here. Is well, is Jasper Ridge used to have this. It died out a couple years ago. Same reason. It gets old and just dies out. It's on the it's on the trail. Um, it's still it's there right now on on the trail that um, goes to Apache Court. Yes, there, there, there's there's a dead one was on there. <laughs> oh no, it's not it's, dead. It's going to be fine. You sure? I don't we, know. We I of hope, the uh, herbarium so. have found it's gone. <laughs> uh, that would be very sad. Okay. Yeah. Well, the seeds there, must there isn't be there. any right now. Yep. Peter, yeah. is that you as the call-in user? Yes. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Dieter. Hi, Dieter. Mm. Well, I think that gives us a quorum for sure. Uh, so we should go ahead and get started because we have a fairly long agenda. Um, so uh, I guess request uh, oral communications for items that are not on the agenda. Mayor, <laughs> Teresa. I would like to just raise to the committee, I am extremely uncomfortable and concerned and very frustrated by the new language that has been inserted onto the end of our agenda without my knowledge or consent. My concern is I may now be liable for reparations or other types of unknown consequences with this language. I was never involved in any discussion of it and I find it very, very disturbing that the town is mandating that we put this paragraph on our agendas to the extent I'm finding it extremely difficult to even come to terms with. I realize we I, cannot have a discussion. I understand that, but I want it to be clear to the committee that I am very disturbed by this type of action. 
Shall we put it on the agenda for next next um, month? We, we certainly yeah. can. And I uh, believe that Race and Equity is trying to organize a meeting on just this topic and inviting all the other uh, committee uh, members to come and have a and come and have a discussion about it. That doesn't modify the process, though, Judith. That's the problem here. So, yeah, the the process was and not it's great. Very frustrating. Okay, I I, I would like to point out that it's not on our agenda. It it's is. I, I understand paper. we can't have a discussion. I'm just trying it's to be the, clear. Yeah, letterhead. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Teresa. Okay, unless there's any other open communications, we should go on to approving the minutes from two months ago's meeting. Um, I'd like to make one modification on those minutes. I apologize oh. to the committee. I misinterpreted <clears throat> my own notes uh, that this would be a hybrid meeting as it is not. And it I'd was like supposed to, to be, no, I it was supposed to be a hybrid meeting that was changed at the kind of the last minute. Okay, so I thought I had miscaptured that and nope. I wanted to correct it. Okay. Nope. Uh, okay, so can we have a motion to approve the minutes unless we have any other comments? I make a motion that the minutes be approved. Second? I'll second. second. Okay, uh, I'll uh, say, Raise your hands if you agree. Yep. Looks I, unanimous. Dieter, I, did you raise your hand? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, hi. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Megan. Yeah, sorry, I got booted off, uh, but I reviewed okay. and approved the minutes. Okay, excellent, good. All right. Uh, so we only had one site permit this month and that was, um, very straightforward. And then um, unsurprisingly, we had a bunch of tree permits and none of those were surprising or particularly controversial. Um, they were mostly oak trees that needed to come out before they damaged houses. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, unless anybody has any questions on the permits and the tree permits, we can move on to the old business. And I think we should start with the election of the officers. And um, I, I have volunteered to do be chair again. So I am happy to do that. I can't remember how we did, how, did we do it as a slate last time, Judy, or did we just do individually? I think we did it individually, but it doesn't really matter. Right, so I'm throwing my hat in the ring for chair. <laughs> Does anybody want to compete? <laughs> no, but I'll nominate you if we need a nomination. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and I'll second. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, should we vote? I guess we need to vote. Yeah. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, and Judy has volunteered to uh, continue as vice chair, which is fantastic. And so I would like to nominate her to be um, for that position for this year. I will second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 All right. Great. And uh, Teresa, notwithstanding your um, concerns about the language in the committee, which is a separate thing, but let's just assume that the language doesn't, that that can be resolved. Are you willing, would you be willing to um, be secretary again or do we need to look? I will do it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, thank I'm, you. I'm behind already, though, here. Just... <laughs> so I nominate so, Teresa for secretary. Uh, I second. And oh, all in favor? So Aye. Aye. All right. Great. 
Okay. <clears throat> and the other thing that I wanted to make sure that we did was we went through all of the subcommittees uh, to make sure that we have them uh, staffed appropriately and that um, people still want to be on the committee that they're assigned to or know that they're assigned. So anyway, first I wanted to start just to remind everybody what our mandated tasks are. And those are most as an advisory function for the ASCC for tree removals, public works and the and conservation guidelines booklet. Um, and Teresa, I know I'm reading kind of fast. <laughs> yeah. um, on the mandated stuff and I can fill you I'll fill you in with the details on if you want. And then there's the budget and the annual report. So those are the mandated things that we need to do. Teresa, Catherine has that all on a piece of paper. Yeah, I have it on a piece of paper. Send you, so. so you don't need to oh, write okay. all yeah. Thanks. I'm, yeah. I'm behind again. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, and as far as the subcommittees go, uh, open space comprehen comprehensive plan is uh, Judy and I. And is that still what you're thinking, Judy? No. You're muted. You're muted. That job is pretty much done. It's sort of a, a legacy a subcommittee. You know, we did that. We did a lot of work when we were oh, looking that's at related. all the properties. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, okay. I think we probably won't have to do anything like that again. So we might just take that off. I think we could just roll list. that roll that into the oversight of the main town-owned places um and we repeated this uh so spring down i have plunder murphy chirello and hypo and open space uh associate nielsen does that sound about right okay town center is um, Megan, Nona, Murph, uh, Judy, and I, and that's right. Will you? Um, or you know, you you are not on that one anymore, right, Judy? I don't think so. Will you, make, I think, will you make a note of who's uh, the chair of those subcommittees as we go along, because that helps. Yes. So spring down, I have you as chair. Is that still right? Yeah. Okay. And for town center, I have Megan as chair. Is that so right? Okay. Um, four sorry, feet. Sorry, could you say again who's on town center? I just have Megan and you, Catherine. That's all I caught. I'm sorry. And no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For Ford Field is uh, me, Dieter, and then the open space representative Nielsen. And Rosati's Field is me, Dieter, and um, and Judy. And I'm I, yeah. So I think that's right. And I'm chair of both of those two. Frog Pond. I have Yogi as the chair. Yep. Uh, Paul, Judy, and uh, uh, ranch representative Sarah Gilbert, Susan Hine, and Denise Gilbert. And then no, open. I mean, it, uh, Sarah. Sarah is is fine. One person is enough. Okay. Well, I'll just circle her name. Sarah. Um, and then Nona is the open space representative. On um, is how yep. this is worded on the frog pond. Um, and then there's the sub subcommittee for the biological survey, um, which is Nona and Paul, because I think that's right. Actually, I thought Judy, you were on that too, or Yogi. There was a third person. Yogi yeah. was coordinating that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure Yogi's on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Triangle Park is uh, Paul and Judy. Judy is the chair of that yep okay and then shady trail parklet is nona and bev lipman who is not on a, the committee she's <laughs> okay uh so 
those I believe are all of our subcommittees. And unless somebody else can think of one, I think um, the other ones were just small subcommittees to, for writing the Redwood guidelines or doing the understory. So that's all done. So uh, the other thing that is a responsibility of ours is main, not maintaining, but um, uh, keeping an eye on our webpage uh, and making sure that the references, the Redwood guidelines and plant lists are available. And, and that's something that we're really kind of growing into this year. Um, and uh, I will yeah. <clears throat> work on that. Okay. I, I have a um, Paul, question yeah. about the uh, rodenticide uh, subcommittee. Is that? Uh, oh, right. I, that yeah. One. So that was going to be my comment as well is that we've been waiting for things to come back in person in order to have the evening program that we planned three years ago. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Okay, so who's on the Rodanticide Committee? That was... Obviously, we both are. Yeah. yeah. And, and Marianne as well. Yeah. And right. Teresa. And actually, Marge. Uh, Destabler and Jean Eastman were on it too. Okay, that's fine. Just as long as we keep it yeah. under. And if someone else would like to be the chair on that, I, um, I'm happy to hand it over to someone else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll do our event and then maybe. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. And then as far as committee act, uh, committee initiated activities, uh, there's the, uh, the broom pool that has been done historically uh, for many years. And I'm happy to announce we have a date, March 5th, for we have the old historic schoolhouse um, and parking lot to do the um, broom pool. So, uh, this is not the time to talk about that, but um, but that is definitely one of our responsibilities and we haven't been able to do it because of the weather. So this is good to be able to do it. We, uh, should, we should start before our next meeting, however, because our next meeting is right up close to the day itself. Yeah, no, we have to get the um, publicity out before the next meeting for sure. So there needs to be a subcommittee working on that. Yes, okay. I think we also need someone who's going to say where we're going to go. <laughs> Don's role. Yeah. 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 Um, what we did last year is we set up a reporting system where uh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody was putting this information, the sightings. So a couple people sent patch identification of patches through the town website. And then somebody else did like a geo map where they put X's on the map where there were brooms. So I, I have all that stuff. I just need to consolidate it. And then um, uh I can definitely go out and take a look at this those sites and um, make sure that we have some good sites on our list. So that is something I will do. It wouldn't um, hurt to to put out a something on the forum. I will say, do that you know, too. What's happening in your right away? Just because it gets people thinking about it up, up front. Um. Yeah. And Carrie Chin. Um, no, Melissa has been. Uh, uh, they have a whole form that you fill out for that they do a lot of outreach too. So hopefully that will help. Um, and then we also participate in the Earth Day, Town Picnic Day, and this last year, the Fire Preparedness. Uh, what that fair, the Wildfire Preparedness Fair that some committees, including us, participated in. So, so those are the three activities that we participate in. And then backyard habitat is habitat is Marianne. 
tip of the month and what's blooming now are me and kudos of the month are Marianne. Uh, and then the last thing is I just, we wanna make sure that we have liaisons with the major town committees. So ASCC, is that still you, Judy? Yep. Okay. You can have me on that also. Um, town center master plan is Murphy again. We need to find somebody else additionally. I think um, that kind of- um, That may not even be happening no, much that, anymore. No, that can disappear into Megan's uh, subcommittee because there's no more master planning that's happening. And uh, trails is, is, Teresa, are you still doing that? Great. Open space, Nona. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, sustainability and environmental resources is Judy. That's me. Ooh, emergency safety. Um, that's not even a committee, really. Is that? Emergency uh, preparedness. Mary Ann is on yeah, er, emergency on. preparedness, so she'd be the person. Yeah. Good. And then the fire ad hoc fire safety is Nona. Yeah, and if someone wants to take that on, I'm also happy to rotate off that. It's uh, work. <laughs> just to, just a heads up. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are we doing on time? A couple other things that we do is monarch. Uh, butterfly support, and that has been um, Paul and Judy. Weed seedling information sheet um, is another thing that we try to circulate in the spring. We just sent one out of maybe a month ago that I did. Um, the poison bait advisory, that's part of the, I think that's part of the rodenticide group, same people. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much it for the things that we um, are our routine contributions to the town. Um, there's a few other things that we do do, but I don't want to go through everything because it's going to take too long. We have too much other stuff to talk about. <laughs> okay. Um, back to the agenda. All right, oversight of town owned properties. Um, this is just to be a review of all of the properties. And, and I think what we should do is we should target for each of these properties, the next review um, site visit so that um, we um, just stay on top of these things. So, uh, has anything happened with frog plan? What is going on with the um, biologist? The uh, no, I think I mean it's still unfortunately um, uh, on hold. I had uh, an exchange and dialogue with Howard. Now with the bad weather and everything uh, going on, nothing happened. As the town um, has to apply, and I don't have the the wording anymore um, to the state for an exemption. Uh, that we don't fall under the uh, California wildlife uh, or watershed, the I said. CEQA thing. The, the CEQA thing, and Howard confirmed that that's on his list. So I will, or I actually plan to send him a note and then also um, for us internally start on updating our budget or action list for the year. So again, based on the weather, not much happened. And then based on that pending complaint slash lawsuit, uh, things are also on hold, so we're waiting for Howard. Okay, so so, but to be clear, Howard is the one who needs to write the uh, or fill out the exemption form yeah, and, the and take care of that. To, yeah. Town yeah. has to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, on we go. I mean, it, it's actually no. Uh, hmm? The guy who was going to file a lawsuit has moved away. But his parents still live there, is my yeah, understanding. Yeah, that's cool. So it may, and, I don't know if it's still an issue or not. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 
actually what the way I view it now is sometimes the if you let things uh, sit for a while, the uh, the situation changes because now my biggest concern is actually the school project and uh, the way the building looks like. So one of the, the key items I will make as a recommendation to us is that we really uh, set up a, a meeting with the school and discuss also how they will uh, take the current fence away and make sure that all the garbage that collected, et cetera, is gone and that there's no runoff from the construction site. So, I mean, they're almost really sitting on, on the pond as we know. Yeah. And that's it. I think, um, I mean, since, since, so regardless of whether the initial complainer is, is around, I think we've gotten to the point where it probably makes sense to file the, that waiver thing anyway, just in case. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Caroline yeah. Zimmerman. Okay. All right. Uh, town Center. Megan. We went out there a couple of months ago, was it? Yeah, I think we gave an update at the last meeting and there's nothing new to report. We'll set up another visit in um, maybe a month or so. Perfect, okay. I'll we need there. to have a budget request in by sometime, <laughs> right? They're asking for them earlier this year than usually. I need to look that up because I haven't gotten that message um, and it might be that I'm not absorbing it. So, um, Triangle Park. Nothing, nothing new at Triangle Park. Nothing needs to be done. It's in good shape. Great. Uh, and Spring Down. Spring Down. We have a meeting this Thursday at four thirty with the people in the subcommittee. Um, I, since I have COVID now, I won't be there. I hope you guys will have your meeting anyway without me. <laughs> and Aww. that's. Uh, Nona, Paul, Marianne. Good. I went okay. out the other day and walked walked all around and looked, and uh, unfortunately, you know, the weeds aren't too high. <coughs> They're only about this high, but they've obliterated. I thought we'd have little patches where we could see where we did the wildflowers because we did them on the on the the bare dirt from the gopher mounds, but they're they're totally buried <laughs> you yeah, can't really see them at all almost all the rhodium i went out and looked myself and they're like oh these rhodiums are just suppressing everything <laughs> yeah because i was going to hand weed in those little areas where we planted and i thought i knew where they were but it's just psh, you really can't see it so the first time go native is going to be out is um late in february and uh, so we'll have them go to spring down first before they go to town center because we'll want to get that mowed as soon as we can yeah did you note by the way the area where the uh, lupinous um oh, not, uh, succulentus were last year are coming up very nicely good down by the stream there were quite a few of them excellent so, there are wildflowers there are poppies a lot of poppies but our Lupin planting might have to wait for another year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Rosati Field and Dorothy Ford Field. Uh, to my knowledge, they both need to be reviewed. Um, and so I will schedule something for both of those for the next in the next month. I did go to Ford Field to see if the uh, Tree of Heaven had come up, and I think I found one. Uh -huh. it, will, it is targeted for whenever it starts leafing out. So, but it's down to one instead of dozens. <laughs> That's uh. <laughs> outstanding. Good. Uh, okay, and then um, our our review of the uh, committee and town cooperation uh, from Public Works. I have I haven't heard anything. Uh, we there hasn't been anything that uh, Howard and I have talked about uh, this last uh, month or two. 
I did want to, and I put into the agenda the just um, the new uh, the fire protection district approved ordinance. And I put it in the minutes because um, I mean I put sorry I put it in the agenda because Jeremy wanted to make sure that we were aware that now there is actually going to be a fine. Um, and so I think that's a I think that's a great thing. Um, and we should support them in um, encouraging people, however it takes, to get them to clear their property. Is the so, town the town fining, or the Woodside Fire Protection District is levying the fine? That's a good question. Um, yeah. I sus yeah, that's it's a probably, really good it's question. probably in all that verbiage. It's probably I, in I those fourteen pages. <laughs> I did read it once. <laughs> I read it and I didn't see a fine, Catherine, so maybe I misread it, but there was a lot in there that was actually pretty distressing to me. Um, you know, I, I find it's going to be interesting. Is the fine going to be for people who don't clear their um, junipers to 10 feet away from the street's edge by, I can't remember when it was, December or November of this year? Or what's the fine for that you're speaking of? Well, so the, the fire department, if they see a problem, if you have not been clearing your property mm -hmm. um, and there's huge amounts of fuel underneath trees, they're going to cite you and they're going to ask you to clear that out and make sure. Um, but I don't they're not going to tell you to remove all your junipers. Well, the, um, it, that's what it says. It mm -hmm. specifically says that 10 feet from the edge of a paved road you must remove all junipers. I, and I only bring it up because the fire department actually came by here yesterday when we were out splitting logs. And my husband, of course, was talking to them ad nauseum. And I mentioned this to them and none of the guys had ever heard of it. They, they didn't know what I was talking about. And I said, oh, never mind. <laughs> Don't worry about it, never mind. And I also said, which is entirely probable that I had misread it. But I went back and looked again and I believe that's what it pretty clearly says in one of the sections there. So I'm just curious. There are a lot of sections. Um, kind of toward the end. Yeah. I don't okay. have the document up, sorry. It, it's not, it doesn't really matter right this moment. It's just, I'm unclear what the our role is from conservation with respect to this new document. Nothing. What are you asking us to do? Nothing. This is just for your information. This is the new okay. ordinance. Okay. No, no. I just wasn't clear. Yeah, I guess I would like to uh, encourage everyone to read it carefully and think about places where conservation wants to um, be really clear on our priorities and the ways in which using native vegetation can actually be a strategy for reducing fire risk, partly by holding territory so that we don't have invasive weeds that are flashy fuels and we don't have excessive erosion. There are all kinds of problems associated with extensive fire breaks. And if I could share my screen for just a minute, would that be okay? Absolutely, I just, yes. I just wanna show one thing, if I have it here. Oh gosh, let me see if I, yeah, here, I think it's this. Um, so I'm gonna enlarge this. And so as far as, as, as part of my work on wildfire preparedness, I've been looking more at the state codes. <coughs> I don't know, can you see this where it says yeah. 2021 California code? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this has to do with the powers and duties common to cities and counties. And it's for the moderate, high, and very high fire hazard severity zones. So that's what we're really concerned about once these um, local responsibility area maps come out for the very high fire hazard severity zones. And the one thing I want to point out about this, this is part of a very long state code that was adopted two years ago. I'm just going to scroll down because I'd like everyone to read the part I've highlighted in yellow. This is state level guidance to local communities. And for anyone who's not actually looking online, I'm gonna read the part that I've highlighted. 
which says that the guidance document shall include, so this is a guidance document that's supposed to come out at the local level, shall include but not be limited to regionally appropriate vegetation management suggestions that preserve and restore native species that are fire resistant or drought tolerant or both, minimize erosion, minimize the spread of flammable non-native grasses and weeds, minimize water consumption, and permit trees and shrubs near homes for shade, aesthetics, and habitat, and suggestions to minimize or eliminate the risk of flammability of non-vegetative sources of combustion, such as wood piles, et cetera. To my mind, this is really consistent with the list that we've come up with. And while we may be mandated to have total clearing from the structure out to three feet or five feet, I think it's really important that we maintain that the, there is a role for patches of shrubs and other vegetation that um, provide habitat for wildlife um, and aesthetics. So I, I'll stop sharing, but I, you know, the, the ordinance is, is pretty severe. Um, and and very narrowly framed right now. And I think that at least this committee has a responsibility to, to, to make sure that people understand that it doesn't have to be clear cut. Right, I see. And I think that there are people within the fire department who are, you know, have a pretty good understanding of that. The fire safe people we, known and I were on a, um, Zoom meeting last week where I did a presentation about balancing habitat with fire clearance and then virtually everybody there was on board with that and understood it. So I don't know how we get from that to this more draconian thing. And I think it might be wise of us to put this on the agenda again next month and, and make in all of us sort of commit to really looking at it, reading it and sort of highlighting the parts that you think we should comment on i mean i think it's been done i don't think they're giving it to us while it's in no it's not a draft, not a draft. it's done None, nonetheless mm -hmm. i think that we you know to put it in perspective not to ask that it be changed but just to say it says this and i mean we understand you know that you understand it doesn't mean bare dirt <laughs> etc right. exactly yeah. exactly and I think it's very important that we do that. And I think it's especially important because, um, you know, people who are not on our committee and reading the minutes of our meetings may not realize that they that there are people around to help interpret it um, and th that it doesn't have to be so all or nothing. Right. So. Right. Right. All right. We have a new person with their hand up. Can you introduce yourself and ask your question? Hi, I'm Sarah Gilbert. I'm, oh, um, hi. I'm the chair of the Landscape Committee um, in Portola Valley Ranch and have been spending a lot of time understanding uh, fire risk management, vegetation uh, management, et cetera. Um, the, I read this and was really very concerned. Um, and I had not heard of this new ordinance before seeing it in your packet here. Uh, so I was just really surprised. Uh, it has wording in there um, about, you know, basically removal of all non-irrigated brush. It doesn't define brush. Right. I, you know, and you look it up on the web and you're trying to figure out, well, what do they really mean by brush? Um, there's not a clear definition out there that I could find. And I think a lot of people will interpret it as any shrub. And it doesn't matter whether it's a fire resistant native shrub or not. They may be, you know, they, they'll probably look at, oh, brush and, and basically almost scraping the land. Um, the, they say that um, they, are, they want a 100 foot perimeter 
of appeal break on all property, developed property that's uh, greater than an acre. And that's all around the whole perimeter of the property, a oh. hundred feet. <laughs> and this fuel break includes removal of all non-irrigated brush. Um, I did some calculations <laughs> and if you have a square parcel, uh, taking the approximation of one acre, you have to remove everything. You do. You have nothing left. Um, yeah, and it's about ninety percent actually of a two-acre parcel. And um, you don't get to, to towards fifty percent until you're around five-acre parcel, uh, where there's this just enormous amount of clearance that this ordinance has uh, in it without defining what brush means. So I found it very well, alarming and I could see a uh, French room having a heyday and all sorts of other invasive, the, the invasive grasses, thistles, et cetera, with all this clearing. And especially in the town of Portola Valley, where there's, I think, a lot of two acre parcels and, and larger, um, basically there's not going to be much, if, if people follow this, there's not much space left for habitat. So, so I, th I think um, one thing is if you look at what their definition of fuel break is, um, is it, it's not clear cleared at all it's just reduce the uh so i think i, I don't i think this is probably not a time to have a conversation i do think it's a really important that we are highlighting that there are some things that we want to talk about more um yeah. and i think that's a good one and i think um yeah so these guys, they're getting serious. And I think um, with this ordinance, and, and I think it would behoove us to make sure that we understand everything that's in here and can help provide some habitat focus to just to strengthen their, you know, the fire departments that, you know, they, they do understand this. They just need to be reminded of it sometimes, I think. So on how they interpret it, you, went, you, yeah. know, you put it into practice when they actually go out, how are they going to interpret it? And well, well yeah, and it's how, very vague. How are people who are reading it going to interpret it? They're not that's all going to exactly go right. ask and say, what do you mean by this? Oh, they just want us to scrape it. Yep. Yeah. No, it's I had, true. I had the same passage highlighted. I really appreciate that you brought that up, Sarah. And I would like a chance to talk about that more. I have the, the same concerns. That square I flashed up on the screen was my own doodle that I was doing <laughs> maybe at the same time that Sarah was, <laughs> was sketching that up. There's about 75 square feet that don't have to be a fuel break. So. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but I, it, I guess it, I mean, it really means, it, it really um, depends on what they mean by a fuel break. Is a, you know, a shaded fuel break where there actually are shrubs underneath and there's a canopy. Um, can, can that be, a, is a shaded fuel break? Does that count? Um, they so, define the fuel break in the- in, in No, the I know they do, yeah. Um, and, and I think that's what we need to make sure that everybody understands is, is what do they mean by a fuel break? So, so Catherine, can I just be clear? Um, so Judy, you had suggested that we put this back on the agenda for next month and that we have everyone on the committee carefully review so that we can come, this is how I've captured it and please correct me if I'm wrong, so that we can come to a mutual understanding of how conservation interprets um, aspects of this ordinance so that we can provide consistent guidance. Is that kind of what it is and that Nona, to your point, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It can be a, a shade thereof. Is that what we're trying to capture as our um, action item to review it with that focus? Yeah, I don't know if I would <laughs> if I would use the words to review it, uh, review for sure, 
not to, um, I can't remember the words you used, but I think it's more to work with them on how this will be interpreted. No, I meant from our yeah. mutual understanding, right, our right. committee. Yeah. But I, yes. I meant that we, you, that you suggested that we, the committee members, carefully review the ordinance so that we can have a, a discussion amongst ourselves so that we are clear on how it should, that's what I thought I understood. Right, about. right, that is what I mean. We should be interpreting it such that we could actually give useful guidance, even on our site visits or whatever, to, to people, especially on our site visits. Right. People love to chat about these types of things. Right, that's I thought sort I remember, of correct. Yeah, that's right. I thought I remember when they set out to do this that they were talking about the bigger parcels, the five acre parcels. So it's interesting that they brought it down to one acre because those rules make sense for a five acre parcel, perhaps. Mm. Even then they're a little bit, even yeah. then they're a little dripping. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know. I mean, it's so I think another... lot dependent. I just, oh, I just think, I know that I haven't read the whole thing and uh, <coughs> that may be true for one or two of you also. And I'd feel better if we'd all really read it and looked at it in detail and then talk. Okay. Nona's Nona? got her hand up. Nona? Yeah, uh, the other thing I think we might consider, which is something that wildfire preparedness does almost every month, is have Don Buller join us so that we can not only have an internal mutual understanding, but we can run things by him. He's really reasonable um, in committee meetings. And so that strengthens great... our position to say, we've already cleared oh. this with Don and yeah. he's on board. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay, we will invite Don. No, did she say we will invite Don or did you say you'll talk to Don at fire committee? I thought I think, she said she has I think talked to- and should invite Don to this committee. Okay. I mean, he normally comes to wildfire preparedness every right. month and makes a, you know, no, gives an update. But I think he, you know, Hearing it from everyone is really different from just hearing it from me. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, there she goes again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nona and her defensible space. Okay, open. Oh, Nona. Okay, how about we have any updates on the open space committee? The mailer? You're muted. Sorry, um, we haven't met for a while, but we are meeting next week. Um, we have, and the town council will be reviewing uh, an application to the committee from Betsy Morgan Thaler. Um, so we may have additional committee members starting next week. And also the town council um, this week is supposed to be reviewing a proposed name change. So I think I mentioned the name change at our last meeting. Mm -hmm. It's going before the council uh, this week. Okay, good. Ask what the new name is going to be? Uh, Open Space Committee instead of acquisition. Oh. So, yeah. Does that mean the funds are going to be used to do the maintenance? No. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a topic to be discussed, I think. Okay, uh, Wildfire Preparedness Committee update, Nona? Um, yeah, I have several things. Um, one is uh, the Wildfire Preparedness Fair. Uh, we participated last year and we had a bunch of our committee members at the table. Uh, so a question, so Wildfire Preparedness is organizing it. Do we want to be present again this year? Uh, last year, there was some discussion about whether we should have a table outside or inside. We ended up being inside. If we really want to be outside, that might be possible, um, but we should um, state a preference. I think we should do yeah. it. It's on, Earth, it's on Earth Day weekend, and I think it's, you know, that it, it, it makes sense to have a little bit of an Earth Day twist to it, so it's important that we be there. And all this work we've done on moderating, you know, the clear cutting. <laughs> with reasonable habit that is the perfect audience that we want to get yeah. that too. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's, I, I really would think we should do it. So good. Uh, so who's going to do it? I'll participate so, again. 
Okay. I, so, I should probably give a list of names to Jennifer Hammer so that you guys, whoever's doing it, I'm I'm interested in doing it. Judy, Catherine, are you guys available? Yeah, I'll be at the table. I'll be at the table. I'll do it. Usually when okay. we do this, we all kind of Either. take a couple hours at the table. Okay, great. Uh, next thing is, um, so uh, as many of you probably know, Wildfire Preparedness has a, a send out chips by email rather than just putting them on PV forum. And several members on Wildfire Preparedness did not know that there were uh, monthly tips from conservation and uh, they don't, some of them don't really want to look at PV forums. So they said, why don't you guys do what we do? And I said, I would pass along the suggestion. I think that's a great idea. And who should I talk to? Because it, it's a different format. Um, it's, it's, and I think I just need a little bit of coaching on how to do it, but it's a, it, yeah, I'm sure they have some sort of a system. And who gets, I mean, how do you get the email list? Is it one of these things where we sign up, you know, you go onto the website and you sign up for, and then it gets distributed to them. Yeah. So I'm yes. sure they've got a protocol all set up for that. Catherine, yeah. it should be pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, I would like it, to because do that. It's a, because it's a, a pull, not a push or whatever you say, maybe backwards. It's still, it, it will go to a limited number of people more limited but but i think the more ways we can get it out the better and do they they still put it on the facebook page and all that i don't know i don't do facebook i don't either <laughs> supposedly i know I that facebook. they have a little blast once, <laughs> you know once you have it together for them they just have four or five things they blast it out to you know yeah. it's just routine for them so i think right. you probably just have to double check once in a while make sure it's still doing that but yeah i think that to an to our a conservation email list is smart yeah so who is it um on the wildfire preparedness committee that does theirs that i could talk to about uh mj lee okay mj yeah, yeah. talk to mj she knows exactly how to do it perfect okay and then the last thing from wildfire preparedness um i just thought i'd pass along that um for the meeting that the committee chairs are having with Jeremy to talk about committee priorities for the coming year, uh, what wildfire preparedness is going to propose is that the town hire um, on a consulting basis, a grant writer to work with committees that would like to submit grant proposals to the state or other entities um, to provide them with help. So I just wanted to mention it um, as something that we might keep you know, in the back of our heads if we want to write a grant or something. Uh, and that's really it. I guess, you know, um, I replaced Marianne as the liaison to wildfire preparedness a year ago. Um, I don't really know how long my term is, and I, I can't actually remember how long Marianne served, but it was a couple of years, maybe three. Anyway, if someone is interested in wildfire, it's a really interesting committee. Um, I'm, you know, I... I'm doing two committees plus that, and it's kind of a lot for me right now. So that's all. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're Lee, if you're I, just Leah San, Nona, you can be just Leah San. When they say who wants to do this, you go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I try. You take I know you. You know you're very good about stepping up and taking on big jobs, and you do a fabulous job. So people look to you, but you got to watch out for yourself. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, trails and paths. Teresa, anything going on in there? There was no meeting because of the <clears throat> Indigenous people language on the agenda it was canceled. Okay. Uh, and parks and rec. Um, I was just contacted a couple, a week or so ago about um, revisiting uh, the idea of a dog park in another place besides town center. So I think it was maybe a year or two years ago that the um, town center was as a dog 
park site was revisited and we just couldn't find a place that was good. Um, and so this is good. They're looking at Ford Field and maybe a couple of other open spaces. Um, and so I'll be meeting with them. And if anybody else would like to participate, I would love to have at least one other person um, help me with that. So let me know. I'll join you, Catherine. Oh, great. Hi, Marianne. Hey. Good. Can I give a quick update on the EPC? <coughs> yeah. Yes, I didn't have that on the menu. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, originally the EPC had, be, I think this is sort of important. The EPC had decided, I was pushing it, that we would, uh, because we were working on the uh, safety element uh, uh, from a uh, emergency preparedness uh, um, angle, and I pushed for a subcommittee, and I was, and they said I should uh, head it up for runoff and impervious surfaces. And then I had my first subcommittee meeting, and unfortunately, um, I must have scared them off because very quickly the subcommittee members changed their mind and said that this was not a topic uh, for the emergency preparedness committee. So, so unfortunately that died. And so there is no, um, there's nothing going to be going on from the EPC side to update the um, safety element from a perspective of runoff and uh, impervious surfaces. So that ish, that specific topic um, is on the agenda under new businesses. We can talk a little bit more about it at that point yeah. because Judy yeah. also had a, a related topic that she wanted to talk about. Yeah. And I think it's a good time for us to talk about that. Um, so, and can I do um, a, a quickie from sustainability? Oh, I forgot sustainability. Two things, yes. Cal Water is rolling out its smart meters. And sustainability is going to uh, build a web page that explains all of it in detail and walks people through understanding it, how to use it, etc. And um, what else? There's there's a new state law about composting requirement, the, the climate pollution reduction strategy, targeting organic waste disposal, and surplus food. So there's going to be new rules in town at the restaurants and grocery stores about what how they handle that and I don't know if there'll also be stuff with green waste that's all okay um regarding the discussion for the consolidated plant lists we we reviewed the um we reviewed them last year last meeting two months ago and um we have got some input from let me yes okay uh we've gotten some I input from a couple of um horticulturists lists uh designers and what i want to do is just highlight a couple of uh additions and then we're gonna uh put this to bed and move on and just in the subcommittee uh do the final edits and um of of the uh the form and the local you know the 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 characteristics of the plants we'll do that we don't need to review that i think if the subcommittee can do that but what i did want to do is just say that we've added a couple of additional trees, uh, the box elder, California black walnut, and black cottonwood, and nettle scrub oak uh, as local uh, trees that we would like to have on the list of, of, uh, of um, suggested plants shrubs i think we only had one additional one uh nettle scrub oak sorry um and then we had no that was it grasses we only had one addition which was the calamagrastis foliosa leafy reed grass 
perennials, a couple of additions, the Dutchman's pipe and uh, clematis, two, two clematises, Virgin's bower, chaparral clematis, and then the red flowered buckwheat. And miner's lettuce. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and uh, the lesthenia, gold fields. Uh, I think the, the, this is the really important list for us. And I think we've added to it. Um, Megan did a great job of going through the Cal IP, uh, the invasive plant councils lists and um, other sources and identified all of the plants. At, we've added quite a few more that we really do not want to see included in people's landscape plans. So that list is the same as it was. I think, right, Megan, it's that is exactly the same as it was in the printout that you got two months ago. So um, we didn't add anything else to that. So anyway, there's just a, a, a few additions. Um, so can and, I just ask a quick question? Yes, on the Teresa. Uh, the fig, scroll back up a little bit. Yeah. Yes, uh, fig is ficus. Yes, here we go. Edible fig. So we're telling people not to plant fig trees. Is that what I'm understanding? If we're going by what Cal Ipsy considers invasive or potentially invasive is on the watch list, then yes, edible fig is something you should not plant. So is that, that, just, is that just the mission fig or is it include the cultivars of the fig. I, I'm, I'm, I was, that was one that stuck out to me a little bit too, because I know the mission figs are a problem, um, but I don't know. So, but it is on the IPC list. So it. Yeah. Any, any fertile cultivar that could spread by seed. I mean, it, I think the important thing to remember here is this is a discouraged plant list. I think it's important right. to bring it to people's awareness. Mm -hmm. I also have an edible fig on my property, Teresa. I admit yeah. I have a discouraged plant. Yeah. Um, it's but I think yeah. it might trigger someone to to look it up and be aware of it and make that decision consciously. And if you're living along a riparian corridor in particular, you might say, oh, this is where they're really invasive. And, and gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Would it make sense on something like that to say, you know, especially riparian areas. I mean, I they definitely will grow in creeks and that's and they do great there. So they sure do. Yeah, we can add that to the notes. Can you is that okay, Megan? Is she there? I'll put that Megan. She's muted. There. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. I, my controls are out of reach. I can't unmute myself. Yes, we can add that. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're almost done. This is super exciting. This is a so, lot of work. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that we approve the content of these lists you've been working so hard on and that a subcommittee will do the final editing and presentation work. Anyone want to second it? I'll second it, but I'm on the subcommittee. I'll second it. I'll second it. <laughs> All right. Uh, shall we? Um, yeah, so vote. I'll approve. Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. Everyone, aye. Any nays? I can't see everyone. Okay, good. I have one question. Um, the um, Calypsi. Uh, um, what else? How, how they rate them. Are these off of a publication or are these off the website? Because I think there are some of these are higher than on the list uh, that I see here, such as Tenuisma, I think is definitely on it, not on the watch list anymore. This is from the website as of maybe two to three months ago. Okay. Oh. I would like to go through and make sure those are the way the the um, Calypsi has it, so that they aren't. Uh, they they do change over time. 
It sounds like yeah. Paul, you just volunteered to join the. Yes, subcommittee. I do. Follow, I volunteered to go and check those. Uh, those. We uh, welcome any quality control checking. I, yeah, yeah, I will I'm do sure that. Sure, I've made typos. If you can yeah. do it in the next couple of weeks, we'll have it in time for the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. We're going to get a hold of this, by the way. Is this on the? Um... I can I can share it with you, Paul. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. This is this great. Okay. Now routine communications. Um, Marianne, do we have any kudos this month? You still Are have you, this. Can you take the list off the screen? I can't. Oh, see I'm anybody. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, whoop. yeah. <sighs> not really how about i was thinking you? the only thing i was thinking but it's not really conservation you know thank you everybody who was clearing the culverts that's what i was really that's what i was gonna say. i yeah. think i think it is i, th I think <laughs> it is too it, okay one. then i will do the culverts i will do the culverts i think right. that's great good okay it's just and always amazing to me that people you know they have gardeners they have they <laughs> they go running and they don't look at the culvert right by their driveway and clear it out it's like folks <laughs> come on <Right. laughs> yeah it's amazing well also what i will also say because this is important and not everybody knows that um now people have to clean it out again because it's probably silted and the silt will dry and then it's like concrete and then yeah. next year they have the same problem. So I will do a a little future thingy as well in the same in the same spiel. Perfect. So like thank you and look again, something like that. Yeah, yeah I I think I'm not sure if you had um, had joined us at this point, but one of the earlier topics was. Um, putting our tips of the month uh, into email instead of posting them on um, on the forum. Like the fire, you know, the wildfire preparedness. Yeah, this one may, like their communications have are, are now going out by email instead of being posted on the forum. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, a bigger, um, it's a bigger audience. I think pe there's a lot of people that don't read the forum. So, so does that go through Carrie? Is it, all I have to do then is to send it to Carrie? I will let you know because I need to figure it out for my next tip of the month, which okay. is going, at, going out in the next day or two. Okay. Just and let Catherine, me know. I thought we said we were doing it in addition to the forum, not instead of the forum because there's uh, no, I can do it. Audiences. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the, I can do it to both. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure the email, uh, what, what is what is done at the EPC, I, I was here when, when you were talking about it, it's done through Kari Chin. A, okay. a normal person cannot use the email list, but that's right. fine. Just double right. check and then it's let even, me know. That's even better. Yeah. Okay. All right, and have we had any interest in the backyard habitat? Um, I, I sent you guys an email, the, the, the sort of semi-new uh, uh, committee after the last committee meeting and not a single person was answering. So <laughs> this is a totally non-functioning committee. I don't know what to subcommittee. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and this is not a great time. This is not a great time of year for back yeah. anyway, yeah. I think it's yeah. not, okay. not surprising. I think of it every now. time. You know, and I think of addresses I see because I walk so much, uh, but I just can't do it alone. It doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. So no okay. update at the moment. Looking for help. Great. So the tip of the month that I'm doing this month, which is just about ready to go out, is uh, one on planting California native plants. Uh, the you know the methods I took, the Calscape. Um, has a great planting guide. And so I took that information and just tried to simplify it and am about to send that out. And I, so I'll try and do that as my first uh, email one um, and also on the forum. And then uh, the month after that, I'm going to talk about how plants get established and the mycorrhizal network and how that fits into the system. 
So, so that's the next two months for tips of the month. And um, I wanted to do, uh, I think I want to do Reebies again for what's blooming now. Because there's so many great uh, Reebies, the gooseberries. So, and I have a good one already. And they're just starting to come out. So. Unless anybody has some other suggestions, we'll do that. Gooseberries and currants. <clears throat> And then um, let's make a subcommittee for the um, broom pull before we get too far um, so that we can get all the um, publicity out before, um, before too long. So uh, I'll join you. I'll join okay, you. Okay, Marianne. I've been looking, I've been looking, and I have a lot of updates where little stuff is coming up and worthwhile. Uh, Great. Yeah. I have to dredge up the stuff I had from last year, but uh I think there's this is good. And did you say Paul? Yeah, I was gonna say two things that are blooming in my yard that are really gorgeous: the um manzanita and the um cyanothus are blooming just gangbusters <laughs> not up here yet that's that's well, in the low land i well, guess it's my hill <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little warmer there for sure yeah uh unfortunately we're not going to do manzanita again because i got my hand slapped by the uh um <laughs> fire department so it is pretty though. It is so pretty. Uh, anyway, well, uh, there's lots of other things that are pretty this time of year. So yeah. Uh, okay, so I have Broomple, Marianne, Paul, Judy, me. Anyone else want to? Hi. No. Peter, great. Yeah. Okay. We'll get that going. Um, and I, I think Catherine did and all the stuff I gave you was a was a broom pull sort of action list with the names of all the people, you know, the the scouts and the yeah, schools and the yeah, I have it, a, it's all kind of laid out. <laughs> great. You know, the one thing um, I was just thinking about the broom pull yesterday, as the soil is so wet, we might want to think of pulling it forward. We can discuss that in the subcommittee. Marianne, we already have the date. When is the date? May, March. Uh, March 5th. Let's start, discuss it in the subcommittee if we should do it earlier. You know, if March 5th, everything is like concrete, the whole thing is a ridiculous and useless exercise. But we can discuss it in the subcommittee. We don't have to do it right now. You can definitely discuss it in the subcommittee, but I will tell you, it took me two weeks from <laughs> filling out the little form to request the schoolhouse <laughs> to getting the okay um, from the town that we had. Yeah. yeah, but you understand if the soil is hard, that the whole exercise is academic. Yeah. No, no, I, right. I, told, I, I, I totally understand. That's why we canceled before. So. The years and the years that we have trouble are the years where there wasn't much rain in the month or two before. So I think it everything is so saturated now that even if it, yeah. you know, unless it gets blazing hot and there's not another drop, it'll still be soft. It won't be like pudding like it is now. But <laughs> right. it's still be right. soft. Judy, there will be another drop. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Okay, uh, and then the last thing is uh, for new business is um, discussing how the committee can contribute to appropriate management of ephemeral streams and drainages um, and, and combined with reducing runoff. And so I put Marianne and, and uh, Judy down for this because they both contacted me with related topics. So I don't so, know how you guys want to. So let me just start by saying I think this is part one of something that we'll do ongoing. And I've been um, spending a lot of time and talking to some people and learning about um, as much as I can, the, the, the biggest, you know, there's enormous amounts of work done on um, large rivers, creeks, 
et cetera, you know, state rules, et cetera. And in order for us to do anything that, that slows, I was really thinking of being down at the micro level of, you know, your land, your piece of property, um, where the thing is too small to be of interest to West Bay Sanitary or, or um, the state, but that if you, the multiplier effect of that, if people put, you know, tiny little gabions in their, in their little ephemeral, I wouldn't even call them streams, they're little runoffs. Um, you can't do it if there's much slope because when a big rain comes, it would wash them down and potentially obstruct. But if the slope is mild, you can put them there and they, you're, you're like a mini beaver, a micro beaver. <laughs> and there's all kinds of interesting work, you know, in the last five, 10 years about how regenerative it is to have the beavers back and, the, and what they do along waterways. Um, so these, these so, are just to, to slow the movement of the water to right. allow it to percolate into your, the soil on your land. So there's all kinds of reasons to do it. One is keeping water on the land, which we know is important. And the town actually has rules about impermeable surface and stuff in order to do that. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's storm prevention. If you, if you can stop you know, a million smaller ones from going into the bigger one, it, it stops the acute runoff. Um, there are any number of things like that. And um, anyway, I, I'll do more homework and I'd like to then see it on the, agenda again, uh, either next time or the one after that. And I'll actually have an outline, uh, not of answers, but of questions probably and things to be looked into and homework that we need to do. And when we have that more information, we can see if it's something we really want to take on. So you, you yeah, want to do- I, I look at it a little bit different than, than Judy. Um, and I think the reason why I look at it a little bit differently because I had a mudslide in 1995. Mm. And uh, I, water runs downhill. And if there is no vegetation, water runs downhill even faster and sometimes takes the whole soil with it. So, so I think there is a lot we could do from an educational perspective uh, with, the, um, with, the, with the residents and with the town staff. And the reason why I'm saying with the town is we have this very good example from uh, the last two weeks or now three weeks, uh, 119 Mapachi, which I think most of us know. Um, I think that was in 2018 where they had an ephemeral stream and there was a big, we, we fought for it, the town fought for it but the homeowner who has in the meantime sold the house just didn't like the idea that his property in Westridge was cut in half, quote unquote, by a relatively deep um, uh, ditch because there was so much runoff. And this is actually the property that um, flooded very badly uh, on the 31st of, of, of January. Um, and I think we can learn from that and maybe we can also help the town to be in the future more aware that although we have global warming, there will be runoff and runoff has to be taken seriously. So that, that's how I look at it. Right, and I don't think the two are inconsistent. I think your mudslide, you know, you have a hill that's much too steep to do this on. It's just a different angle. We, we are not contradicting yeah. each other. Uh, yeah. You know, you you know, you have there are swales and what have you. And then I am looking uh, at it. You know, if you have three hill properties and you have saturation, you have to think from the top to the middle to the bottom. The water will have to flow, and it somehow has to be managed all together. There is not much point if the top water gets, goes to the corner of the second house and some nothing is being taken care of. And then from the second house to the third house, it goes at another side of the corner. Um, and and it, it's predictable where water goes. So it's not that difficult to manage and to think in terms of like you're saying, uh, you know, your swales or whatever, or in terms of vegetation uh, or in terms of uh, putting it into a pipe. 
So I think I had sent to all of you tomorrow, there's um, a really interesting talk um, by a woman who wrote a book called Water Always Wins. Mm -hmm. Looking at, you know, <laughs> droughts and floods. And it uh, sure I does. Think, I think it sure does. Yeah, I think she's uh, more focused on these underground rivers and things that they know about. But and I'm I'm really sorry I can't go now because I was going to try to get her aside and ask her about the micro level. You know what can one do at the micro level? So the my task between now and the next meeting is to find out how small a thing is not uh, uh, doesn't draw state concern so that we don't get into that you know huge thing which would make the whole thing impossible. And um, yeah, what well, just what the logistics, Nona? Yeah, I don't, if I can share my screen, I think all, all or nearly all of you have been to uh, our property here at, on Brookside. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I might just share an example of water <laughs> winning, <laughs> always winning. So let's see if I can share this. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to. Let's see, hold on, just hold on a sec, I'm getting there. Uh, oh, maybe it's not gonna come up. Hmm. Have, you, have you got permission, <coughs> Catherine, if you give her permission? She shared okay. something before. Oh, okay. Up on oh. My screen. No, I don't wanna share my screen. Maybe I'll try again in a minute. Go yeah. ahead with whatever. Yeah, we would love to see it. Keep trying. Yes. <laughs> uh, so does it make sense to start a subcommittee now? Or you do guys, you want to just- You guys go ahead, because I'm not getting it to open. Okay. It's in the wrong kind of format right now. Sorry. Why don't we start with just Marianne and me? We'll do homework and figure some stuff out and sort of strategize about what we want to do. And then we'll come back to you. Perfect. Okay. I don't have anything else on our agenda. So I... Um, so Catherine, before we adjourn, just to be clear, our next meeting is at this point is in person. Is that not correct? Because we have to start doing that complicated multi whatever yeah. sharing. Yeah. We're, we're becoming multimedia mavens. If we um, don't, if we don't yeah. do it in person, right? No, and so we, no, uh, we, it is required. We have to do the meetings uh, at the um, schoolhouse. Everybody has to be there. And it is complicated enough to try and dial in that it's not worth it. Um, is is was the takeaway that I got. I don't know if Mary has a different perspective. Yeah, no, I can no, 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 that's not correct. The issue no. is that there are laws. And if, if, as, if I, as a committee member, would be attending from at home, no. I would have to have all the legal requirements. Mary, yeah. Yeah. Mary no, I understand. Mary, I understand. Mary that. Yeah. Yes. No, oh. I, I understand what the background for what of it is. Yeah. Um, but the, the bottom line is that just it's it's so complicated to meet those legal things that it's it doesn't make it worth right. it to do it. Right. So, so I have a question for Mary then, and Mary, you probably don't know the answer to this yet, but uh, <laughs> other cry. committees, other committees will want to know too. We have to meet in person, right? Um, there will it, the the meetings have to be available by Zoom, so other people can come by Zoom. So, um, so that I, as a committee member, I can't come as a committee member and be counted towards the quorum because I haven't met all the arcane rules about accessibility, et cetera, in my house. Can I come as a member of the public? Don't count towards the quorum, don't vote, et cetera. Yes. I would think I could, but. Yeah, you can come as a member of the public for sure. Yeah. Okay. And you can go to a place. Yeah, like, right, but I'm not well, doing you can it. call like, all over everyone, right? right? Exactly. Like, like tonight, you know, if we were in person, I couldn't have come in person, but, uh, and there's a quorum without me. So I, it would have been nice to be able to attend the meeting. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's a guest, so to speak, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. be another resident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I was just at a conference on this and, and in fact, there are works, workarounds, but we didn't choose to do them. So that's, 
That's this is what we're saying we're doing. Uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going back to bed. Bye. <laughs> Good night. Good <laughs> night, Good night, Jay. Good so night we're everybody. Bye. It's Good better, night. Judith. So we, we're adjourning now. Right? We are adjourning now. Thank you. No joy, June. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye. So.
Yeah. It's too early. Let me show you what I do. Well, the, um, the, the Zoom meeting is over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just screwed it up. Go like that and get rid of it. 